What's up? It's your boy Carcino here. We are kicking it old school. That's right. We're taking it back to the old PC from 15 years ago. Yep. We're taking it back. Taking it back. We're going back to the days of A. Smith's Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame has been unveiled. And without question, Kobe Bryant was going in this year where Vanessa will speak for him and probably we will hear from his daughter. Um, Tim Duncan's going in. Kevin Garnett is going in. Don't forget Tamika Ketchens, a WNBA legend, 10-time All-Star. She's going in as well. Uh, Eddie Sutton, another standout. You know, rest in peace to Rudy T. He's going in. You know, uh, but, you know, the biggest standouts is going to be Kobe, Tim, and, and Kevin. And without a question, you're looking at three guys with a combined 48 all-star appearances. Um, you know, Kobe's demise is going to rain heavy on everybody's minds because of the simple fact that Kobe was so impactful as a basketball player that, you know, we're talking about one of the greatest players of all time and just a sudden loss like that. It just affected everyone. Even if you didn't know, it felt like a family member that had just exited your life. And, you know, just people weren't prepared for a world without Kobe Bryant in it. So that's always going to, like, kind of, you know, blanket um, a lot of the activity that we've seen so far. You know, and it is what it is. (sighs) We got to move forward. Now, these NBA legends, the big three, Kobe, Tim, and Kev, you're looking at, uh, you know, it's going to be dominated, you know. Like she said, it's an incredible accomplishment. That's what Vanessa said. Obviously, you know, they wish that he was here to celebrate it, but he's given us enough speeches to where you could play any of them for his like Hall of Fame inscribement and they were all fit. You know, um he is a prime example of what hard work and effort can do. You know, he came in the game with this raw talent, but it's what he did with the raw talent and the hard work was put in to elevate his game. And when he elevated his game through all this hard work and pushing himself. It was it was like a semblance that you could use not just in basketball, but in life in general. And he was taking that in the next step of his life outside of basketball. And he was happy. And he was giving NBA players hope, you know, that, you know, retirement is not a death sentence. You know, it's it's just retirement. There's other things you could do. You're just retiring as a player. There's other avenues that will keep you vested, you know, in the sport. Or well, not just in the sport, but in life. You, you know, life goes on. Now, I'm sitting here... Uh, You know, looking at everything and the stats and all the highlights, you know, Kobe played 20 years with the Lakers MVP in 2008. Should have had about three of them in his career, at least. And, you know, all the tributes have been paid. I mean, there's nothing five time NBA champion. It's nothing else about Kobe Bryant. We could possibly say, you know, um. But then you look at Tim Duncan, the quiet man, the big fundamental. He wasn't flashy. He just got the job done. Smart, very efficient with the basketball. He helped David Robinson get his first two championships. 
when no one it didn't look like David was going to make it at all he got him over the hump he was the missing piece he played 19 years with the Spurs winning 5 NBA championships just like Kobe you know uh there's a lot of years Tim Duncan could have been MVP. But, you know, he won, what, back-to-back championships in 2002 and three. Then uh, they won in, like, 2005, I believe. They won three out of the last four years. They were dominant, and they are always battling the Lakers for the supremacy of the Western Conference, you know. But he elevated people's games. He was able to adjust no matter what player they had, no matter what style they had. He was able to adjust and play with anybody. And he was definitely a difference maker. And a lot of people say, well, it was the system of pop. Tim has been great ever since Wake Forest. Uh, He's from the Virgin Islands. He's just remarkable. Uh, Can't take anything away from him. That bank shot off the glass. Like him and Scottie Pippen used to do that. He made it efficient. Right hand, left hand, you know. What would you change in Tim Duncan? (laughs) You know, this is the guy you would want in the locker room with the players. Now you see him as an assistant coach. You know, there's nothing he would probably change about his career. There's nothing there that's worth changing. Everything was done the way... That they would say by God's design. You know it was meant to be that way. You know you, you, you'll you be lucky as a coach to get a Tim Duncan on your team. You know it's not too many pl- like players individually that say oh I didn't like Tim Duncan. No. No he was definitely somebody you rooted for. Now. Now let's look at. Some other scenarios that people didn't know. Uh, Kevin Garnett, he was in a Western Conference where it was a big glamour party for the Lakers and Spurs. And and him and the Minnesota Timberwolves kept grinding it out, kept fighting. To the one year, they were number one seed in the entire Western Conference with Marbury himself and Sprewell. They were going to bring the Minnesota Timberwolves to the plat- plateau and they were going to defeat the Lakers and move forward. They were ready and they just didn't get the job done um, via help from the refs and everything else. A lot of corruption took place during those times, but they weren't they weren't picked, you know, to move forward. It was unfortunate, but Kevin Garnett gave everything i mean he was essential he he much different from tim duncan you know uh this is a guy who put his whole heart and everything on the line every night you never were going to get a bad night out of him he was going to definitely challenge himself and push himself to the limit and he played a very aggressive game verbally as well as physically on the court he was more the emotional leader and very much focused and for to play as long as he did you know in his career where mostly people like like him didn't play that long because you know he's a big guy they normally break down from injuries and he's he's had a lot of them he bounced back and Coming to Boston was that was the probably the biggest challenge of his life, his career, and and man, he was thinking, man, maybe I stayed in Minnesota too long trying to get things to work out. But he was glad he got there, you know, and and did what he did, and to go into class with Tamika Ketchens, Kobe, Tim Duncan, you know, it was quite an honor, you know, to to bring that. To a forefront, you know, bring all of that full circle. So, for him, you know, I'm happy for him. He got the championship with Boston in 08. You know, I was very proud of him. 
Uh, he won an MVP, I believe. I know he won an All-Star Game MVP. They played in the finals. Uh, he beat Kobe once, then Kobe beat him. And, and you know, it was just a struggle every year for them to make it. And they were just coming up short. But they were definitely uh, an efficient team. And Garnett was an exceptional basketball player. Now, Tamika Ketchens, you know, WNBA uh, college highlights. She was just, my goodness. <laughs> you know, she played uh, with male counterparts her entire life. She played 15 years in WNBA for the Indiana Fever. And she came in the league in 2001. You know, she went to Tennessee, and, you know, the rest is history. The girl could ball. You know, she could play. She was one of the best female defenders who was a top scorer and facilitator. She can control the flow of the entire game. The Indiana Fever only won one championship, and it was because of her. Her defense... In that whole series, that season, they hadn't seen that in the WNBA. Tamika Ketchens immediately came in and put her imprint on the game. Um, I can't give you her numbers that she averaged, but her defense to offense was probably second to none in the league. And I know she destroyed the league that year. And then she got finals MVP because of it. Uh, she's the all-time leader in steals in the WNBA. You know, she's a five-time league defensive um, savant. You have, you have to go very far to find someone that's even second to her in uh, in that department of defense. She's she was it. So I'm definitely uh, very happy that she's on this platform as well. She deserves her spot, her shine. You know, um, she was five times defensive player of the year. And I felt she should have got more. They just felt they should give it to other people. And, you know, so much you could say. You know, it's uh, a quite an impressive uh, class that's going in this year. There are the countless others. Rudy T, two championships with Houston. You got, um, you know, Eddie Sutton, Kentucky. It's a very big year for sports, you know. So I'm just going to say thank you guys for listening to me. If you want to donate to the page, you love everything you heard, don't forget my cash app is Carcino. Um, it works that way. Uh, the Patreon is up and rolling. The Carcino for Life Patreon. We have a podcast called the Carcino for Life Podcast. It's on Spotify, Google Playlist, Apple Podcasts. We're everywhere now. Took a while, but we're everywhere now. So now we have many other things coming up. So, um, you know, we stay busy. <laughs> so subscribe, hit that notification button, and I am out. <laughs>